Hello everyone and welcome to the Worldwide Center of Math video series on how to use your TI-84 graphing calculator. So in this video I'm going to be introducing you to how to graph functions on your TI-84 graphing calculator. So the first thing we do before we enter our equation is let's just make sure that all our uh, plots are off. So let's hit second, go up to the y equals where it says stat plot above it. And we're just going to go down to number four. It just automatically turns, number four will turn all your plots off. Hit enter, enter again, good. So now we know all our plots off, so nothing's going to interfere with our graphing of our functions. So now we're going to go to y equals. And you'll notice there are a bunch y1 through y9. You can graph nine functions at the same time if you so wish. We will just start by graphing one. So then we're going to enter some quadratic function here. So let's hit the... The x key here is our variable key, in the top middle here. So we're going to do x raised to the second power minus 6x plus 5. So that's the function we're going to graph. And before we graph it, let's uh, check our window settings by hitting this window key up next to y equals. This window key tells the graph, uh, you know, what the, how the x values it should be graphing, the y values it should be graphing. So let's set x min to negative 5 instead of negative 10, x max to 5. The x scale here just tells it how many tick marks between negative 5 and 5, if we want them spaced every 1, every 2, etc. Uh, let's set the y min to negative 5, 5 as well. And all right, so now we have our windows set, or sorry, we have our y scale set at five accidentally. Y max five. All right, so now that we have our windows set, let's hit graph and see what our function looks like over here on the main screen. All right. All right, it looks pretty good. I can't see as much of it as I would like, and there are two ways we can rectify this. We can either go back to the window and kind of take a guess at uh, making it larger, uh, you know, widening our ranges, or we can go up next to the window button, there is a zoom button. Let's hit the zoom button and we see a bunch of options that all start with Z for zoom. And all these options change the window to a certain preset size. The one you'll use most often and that we're going to use is we're going to scroll down to Z standard, hit enter, and it will re-graph using Z standard sets the window to negative 10 by 10 uh, on the X and Y axes, which is what it was originally set at before we changed it. And so it sets it to that. That looks good. We can see all of our graph here, or a good chunk of it. We can see that it's quadratic. And so now that we have it graphed, uh, we can do a lot of things with this graph. Uh, first thing we'll do is try to find the x and y intercepts. So we will find the y intercept first, y intercept being where it crosses the y axis and x equals zero. We do this by using the trace button next to the zoom button at the top here. We hit trace. And what trace does is it brings up the cursor on our graph. So if we hit the arrow keys, you can see it that the cursor moves along the graph and down at the bottom here it says x equals this and then y will equal you know, that. And to find the y-intercept what we can do is we can enter specifically if we hit trace we can say go down to the zero button hit x equals brings up this x equals and we can manually input what we want uh, the, where, where we want the cursor to move to. So x equals 0, we hit enter, and it moved the cursor to x equals 0 and y equals 5. So we know that's our y-intercept. We can't do the same thing for the x-intercept because it only takes an x-input, not a y-input. For our x-intercept, we want y to equal to 0. So the way we do this is we hit the second button, and above trace, there's the calc menu. So second, trace button, and it brings up a few options here, most of which we'll use. But we're going to start by finding the x-intercept using this number two, zero. 
So we hit enter on zero, and now it asks a question. It says left bound. It wants to know where to look, uh, as for how far left should it look for the given uh, zero, the x-intercept value. So we can use the arrows to move the cursor. We're going to look for this first zero here. I know there's another one to the right. Let's just do the first one. So we simply move the cursor a little to the left of that zero. We hit enter. And then it asks us how far right should the calculator look for a zero. So we move the cursor a little bit to the right of it. Hit enter again. Uh, it asks us one last question. It says guess. It kind of wants us to kind of guess where the value is, just hit enter. And we hit enter again, and it says the zero is at x equals one, y equals zero. Great, and we could have done the same thing for the one over here. On the right side, we could have just set the left bound a little to the left, right bound a little to the right, and it would have calculated that zero instead. So after we find our zero, we can also find uh, max and minimum values of our graph. Uh, by going to the second calc menu again above the trace, we see that number three and four are min and max. Uh, they both work the same way, so let's just choose one. Let's find the minimum uh, of our graph. And as it did with before with the intercepts, it's now asking us left bound. Where should I look for this minimum value on the graph? Well, I want the, I want the absolute minimum here where the graph you know, is concave, so we want this minimum value. Uh, so let's hit enter here, a little bit to the left. Now let's arrow over to the right of this absolute minimum value we're looking for. Hit enter again. It again asks for a guess. You can just move your cursor near it and just hit enter. That's your guess. And then it calculates what it actually is. X equals 3.0000015. So x equals 3, y equals negative 4 is our minimum value of this function. And like I said before, it works the same way with maximum. I would just set a left bound, a right bound, and it will find the maximum value in that range that we set. Uh, and the last thing we'll do, or one of the last things we'll do here, is we're also going to use the intersect feature. We can find out where two graphs intersect. But to do that, we need to have a second graph intersecting our first graph. So we will go to the y equals button again, and now we're going to arrow down to the y2 function and graph another function. Let's just graph the function 3x. 3x. And we can go back over and hit the graph key. And there it graphed in red uh, the function 3x. So we can see that it intersects around here but I want to know exactly what that value is, and, I calc and the calculator can help you find that. So we can go to second, above the trace, second calc, and you can see number five here says intersect. We choose number five, and it asks us a question, first curve. It just wants to know which curve, if there were, you know, say five curves on the screen, it just wants to know which is the first one you're going to choose and the second one, so it knows which two curves to find the intersection of. So first curve, we just hit enter on this first one. Second one, it automatically changed over to the red curve, you can notice. Um, if I, you know, I can just, I can hit the up and down arrow keys to switch between the curves, but since I already chose the blue one, let's just keep it on the red, hit enter. Uh, again, it always likes to let us guess, so we can just move the cursor nearby the intersection point, enter, and it'll calculate the actual value. The intersection is at x equals 0.5948 such and such, and y equals 1.784. So that's how we find the intersection of two curves. Uh, the last thing I'm going to show you is that we can also graph in polar coordinates and parametric coordinates. Uh, if you haven't used these that's fine, but to get to them, all you have to do is hit this mode key next to the second button, and if we scroll down to where it says function, parametric, polar, sequence, uh, let's just choose parametric first, and you'll notice that after we choose parametric, and if we go back to our y equals, 
it now has inputs for our parametric function, our x as a function of t and our y as a function of t. And even our window settings change. It, our window now says what values of t should I calculate x and y for. And again, x min, x max, y min, y max to make the graph. And if we go back to mode, we can do the same thing for polar coordinates. We go down, we arrow over to polar here. We choose polar, go back to our y equals. Again, it's changed. It's now asking what is our radius value, r value. And again, our window will change. It's now asking for theta. Again, if you're not familiar with it, that's fine. But if you're using them, it's good to know that you can just go to mode and change between these uh, types. And to go back to the y equals, we just choose the function one, the first option, hit y equals, and we're back. So those are just some of the fu uh, functions you can use when you're graphing. So now you know how to graph your function, find intersects, intersections, uh, minimum values, and intercepts, and that's it. Thanks for watching. For more videos in this series, or for more general mathematics videos, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking here, or visit our website at centerofmath.org by clicking here. Thanks.